Hey gang, Lisa here from Call That Girl. Thank you for checking out my video on how I onboard clients with Outlook and Office 365. Well, in the past year, I've tried two onboarding forms and this is number two still. First one I made was, it just didn't work out for what I needed, but then I took a break and then I came back and created a second form. This one I like much better. It might not be 100% done because I keep finding new things I need to add to it as I have a failure. Okay. <laughs> You're probably like me, like after two hours of troubleshooting, you figure out something that you probably should have checked in the beginning, but this form is pretty good. Okay. So it's not for probably MSPs to onboard clients to their new, you know, PSA systems and their monitoring and all that. This is more for break fix people who are taking on calls remotely on site or in their shop, how to fix um, outlook problems or troubleshoot office 365. MSPs might want to check it out just to have another form to, you know, look at or something and see what they're missing. But let me tell you that I've spent a lot of time on this form and it's really good. And that's why I'm making the video to share it with you all. Before I show it to you though and cover everything, I just want to let you know that I am for hire. I have a lot of uh, technicians that call me for mostly guidance. You know, they're like, Lisa, we're in a pickle. We don't know what to do here. And then I remote in and say, okay, go do this, this, and that. And the techs like that because then they can go do the repair on their own time and just use me for kind of a little coaching, I guess it would be called. Um, I do that a lot for, for the technicians. Sometimes they just want me to do the job and they're like, fooey, do it. Some others just want to refer me a client also because they don't want nothing to do with it. And then I just pay them a commission. It all works out however you want to um, hire me for your company to help. I'm more than willing to step in. So the soundboarding though is kind of nice. If you did it beforehand, you'd even save yourself more time because then I could just get in and see the form and, and get at the repairs you need done. All right, well, I think I'm ready to go here. I'm gonna share my screen and this is about 15 minutes of me explaining stuff. So just letting you all know that there. And here we go. Okay, got a little pink pointer here for you guys. So the first thing is this form is done in a gravity form in my WordPress. You can use many other kinds of forms. You know, if you have a DocuSign or some other form you want to use, this is, you can actually, you know, take my ideas if you like also, but uh, the form I cannot uh, put online or anything for you guys. Anyway, so the name, date to the job, issues needing resolved. That's typically what the client is calling about. And then I try to do these. Now I'm gonna tell you that I try to do this before the job. It might not happen, but I always try to make sure that their client agreement form is filled out. That doesn't always pertain to prepaid, uh, prepaid ticket clients, but new clients, okay? I want them to have the form in, which is different than this one. And then I try to check out their domain in the MX toolbox just to see what's going on. A lot of times they don't know how their email is hosted. So I like to know beforehand. It's also, it keeps me in mind if they're using something old, they need to go to Office 365. I'll know that beforehand. And that's kind of nice for your upsells. I also sometimes go check them on a LinkedIn and um, this exchange migration is kind of part of this MX toolbox thing. Then I also like to know because I do break fix if they have another IT tech or an IT provider because sometimes I have to go in and call them to have an MX record updated or DNS issue resolved. I don't control it. Okay, so these little spots in the form can change. I've already moved them around a couple times because I don't like where they were. Because when I get into a machine, I sometimes my head is going into six different directions because there's a lot going on. But this is the order I typically do this though, is first thing I do is check the Windows updates, okay? <laughs> and a lot of you are watching are probably laughing because the clients, that are unmanaged never have updates done, period, okay? So I always go and do that first. If it needs the 1903, I actually make them do all of that before I even start. Um, I, 1909 doesn't take as long, but the 1903, and I think it was the 18 something else that was real big. I just have them do it because it's gonna require it and sometimes it fixes their problem, which, you know, if that does, that's great. But I always do that first. And then I also talk to them about their backup programs also. Some clients I have to actually stop and say, you know what, let's get everything backed up, then let's do those updates, and then let's get on with the repair. I'm very preventative about people's data, and I just don't like jumping in if I don't see these two things uh, up to date and you know whatever. I also do my own backups of Outlook if I have to, so that's my secondary backup, but 
I just, these two are really important to me. <laughs> and um, so over here, I also put train the user. A lot of my clients are break fix. They're not managed. So I just teach them how to do the updates on a weekly basis. So they're not so behind. Okay. These two are very important. Then um, let's see down here is antivirus, iCloud, Dropbox, syncing and internet speed. All of these things are important when I'm troubleshooting Outlook. Sometimes they have an antivirus issue. Uh, generally McAfee is troublesome with Outlook and there's a few other ones, but I just write it in my notes here. So I know while I'm troubleshooting, if I need to remove it or disable it, I can do it right there. iCloud also, I'd like to just take note if it's uh, installed because that basically means it's probably an Outlook and that might be causing an issue. Dropbox and OneDrive, I look to see if those are installed right away because sometimes they're still synchronizing and they're causing problems with Outlook not working or whatever. Uh, many times you'll see in the OneDrive, it's just um, it's just sitting there trying to sync. And a lot of times in OneDrive, it's trying to sync an Outlook PST file that's connected to Outlook and that's why it's not working. So you have to disconnect it, pause it, then do your work in the back end of Outlook. And then sometimes I can tell if the internet speed is slow. A lot of my clients are traveling when I'm helping them. They're at a hotel, they're at a cabin, and sometimes they're on an airplane. And I can say, well, we can't do that repair now because your internet's too slow. <laughs> so these are all good to know before you even get started. And then the computer information. Now this might seem like it's overkill, but it's very important. So I sometimes write down the computer name I check out the OS version. It really doesn't matter for the work I do, if it's uh, Windows 10 Pro or Home. Windows 7, of course, does make a difference now. I look at the hard drive size. I check out the percentage full. Uh, sometimes it's redlined. And right there, I'm like, well, we can't do anything if you're at the red line, because then we have to make space. And sometimes an OST file is that problem because the hard drive is out of space. So we have to go check that out. I also like to take note if it's a solid state drive. And because of my last client, who's awesome, I enjoy working with him. He had a Microsoft processor uh, on one of his newer computers that ended up being like two hours of us troubleshooting for him to send it back. So I'm not going to support any of those anymore until it's properly um, bugged out <laughs> or debugged. Okay, so this is just basic information here. Then I come down to the Windows, Office, and OneDrive accounts. And this is where things can get a little confusing because the clients will probably not understand. If you're a client watching this, you are definitely going to be like, yeah, I don't understand any of that. So I have to try to explain that there's a difference between um, the Microsoft Store accounts and the Office 365 business accounts with the um, login.microsoft. And if you don't understand that, this, this uh, video will help a little bit, but not 100%. So the, so the first thing I do is I check to see if their Windows account is logged in to a Microsoft account or just a local administrator. And I take a note because sometimes it's okay to stay logged in as Windows, depends on their Outlook issues and depends if there's issues with the accounts. Sometimes it's better to sign out and put them into a local account. All right, I had to fix this today here. So logged into Windows or local. Then I'm gonna share, uh, share my screen here. It's my word here, and I'm gonna scoot this over and show you guys a couple things, okay? So after I check the windows, I come over here and look at the user information. I go see what they're signed in with. I write down that email, because a lot of times this email here does not match this email here, and that's important to know. They're signed in with one, which also connects a OneDrive and possibly a SharePoint. And if this is like a Yahoo account or something, then the Yahoo account is probably connected to a OneDrive with the Microsoft Store account. SharePoint should not be there with the Yahoo account, okay? And then I come over here and I go look at the Manage Account button and the Manage Account, this will tell you real quickly if you open it. And I'm gonna talk a little slow here because I'm gonna see what opens. So Manage Account, when you click on that button, you can see I'm logged in with the Lisa call that girl that biz. And up here is login.microsoft online. So that is definitely a business account. If you were to see that here, and this up here says live.com or outlook.com or something like that, then you are dealing with a, a personal account that was logged in through the Microsoft Store. 
So that's real important for you to know when you're troubleshooting is what accounts are in here and what accounts are in here. Okay. And also, well, let me look at my form here and get a little confused. The email accounts in the office, what type are they logged into, the email account and the account email. So that's, that's all what I just covered there. Now the office version can get a little more complicated. So let's come back over here. Okay, so over here, this will say if it's Office 365 Business. I don't believe it says home anymore if it's a home version, but you can go click Manage Account and you'll know if you hit the store account or not. And um, sometimes if it says the product here, just keep in mind that the products that people have been buying, I'm not having, um, I'm having a lot of problems with those folks. They're the ones who have called into Microsoft for many hours and they can't fix it. So I just end up going, look, the products, aren't that great anymore. You're better off going with a subscription and because they're paying me a lot of money, they're like, just fix it. So we go purchase the office 365 subscription and their issues are resolved many times. They don't like it, but when you buy the product, you have to pay Microsoft if it's a software issue. So I just say, let's just do this. And then they give you free support. <laughs> Works better. Um, I also check to see if the updates are updated and most of the time they're not because people think it's automated and it isn't. And then I also come down here and check out the about word part, which is the version, which doesn't really matter for me anymore. And I come to about and I go peek to see if they're on 32 or 64 bit. I know a lot of MSP folks, I'm gonna get out of here a sec. I know a lot of MSP folks run the 64, 64 bit version and they don't have problems. And I see it all the time online. Oh, we never have a problem. I get it. But when you're dealing with break fix, you do have a problem with 64 bit with th third party apps, which is like G Suite, iCloud, some CRM systems. So you really have to just uninstall the software and then get the 32 bit. And that's how I do it. And uh, a lot of folks like to argue, but you know, that's, that's what I found out throughout my troubleshooting. So I try to find out here if it's product or uh, the office, home or business, verify the product key. So if they did purchase it, you do want to make sure they have a product key available because you're going to have to reinstall it. Now, most of the time it should be in their Microsoft store account. And if they don't have the store account information, then don't uninstall the office until you have that because you are kind of stuck. Okay. Learn that the hard way. So anyway, just go log into the store account though, and you can find the apps in there, installed in the apps or programs. So the last one that's really important is sometimes you will not find the um, office program in the control panel uh, or installed anywhere. So then it came pre-installed as an app and that I look for right away because many times people are calling me with the trial version and it expired or they have other problems and you have to go purchase it or install the store version. The pre-install ones, I almost have to remove all the time. And uh, here's a little tip. If you're in the control panel and don't see the mail app in there, then it's a pre-installed trial version, okay? Yeah, I've seen that too many times. Okay, next is I'll look specific stuff. I know and you're probably going, how do you deal with all this so fast? But I've done it so much now that to me, it's just like a checklist in my head. Um, I open up the control panel, mail app, I go look at the profile and I go verify the sizes of the OST files in the back and I go look at all the accounts and kind of just take some notes. My clients tend to have a lot of email accounts and OST files with all their different IMAPs and everything. So I just put as many notes in there as I can. And I also take a note of how many profiles they have. And I kind of see when those dates were made and things like that just for my own personal use. Um, I also look to see if sometimes there's iCloud in there as well, and I can see if it if it's working or if it's broken. And uh, also, I do all this before I even open up Outlook, by the way, because <laughs> most of my clients have Outlook issues not opening. Then that kind of gives me an idea what's going on. Then my last question is, I ask about their phone types because. It's good to know early on if you're going to be dealing with fixing an Outlook issue or Office and it's their phone is um, having issues too. A lot of times they'll tell you at the end. So it's good to know beforehand because then you can include it in your repair work. Many times you're migrating to Exchange or something like that. So I just asked that question there and how do you sync your calendars and contacts because sometimes they have um, 
companion link or G-Sync it or some other third party, you need to be aware of it. Now this stuff here is up to you if you wanna ask these or not. These are kind of upsells and follow up stuff. I'm really not good at these. I'm, I, I will tell you I'm not. I have it on my list every week to send out follow ups and then I get busy and forget and uh, anyway. But sometimes I do follow up with homework for the clients. So I'll say, look, I'm gonna send you an email with the homework and that you'll get because sometimes they have things to do. I always try to remind them to do their Windows updates. I will send them my scheduler link to, to get on my calendar again. Some I ask for testimonials. And then some I say, look, why don't we put you on the calendar for three months from now, kind of like the dentist, and we can do a spot check because maybe their stuff is having a mailbox management issue or something. I've also tried to send them my Carbonite link so I can you know, earn a little on the affiliate plus then they get uh, to use the Carbonite from my partner account. And sometimes I'm upselling them on an exchange migration. So I send them the survey forms for that to get started as well. And junk mail spot check. Now this is something I'm gonna be working on in 2020 is I'm gonna start checking my junk mail for clients a little better. Um, working on a package, I don't have it secured yet. It's a security setup thing, but um, it's in progress, let's put it that way. And I was gonna at one point try to sell a quick question plan that's still on there, but I've decided against it. I'm not gonna do it. Sorry guys, no reoccurring revenue with me. I voted no. And then at this point, um, I should be making a blog or a social media share or video about the issue I just fixed. And as much as I you know, say I wanna do it every day, it doesn't happen every day, but I put it here as a reminder. And then once I get the security package done, I will uh, try to offer that as well. And I hit submit and this all goes to an email for me and I have all the notes and I've tested this, it works pretty nice. So I really like it and I'm probably gonna change it again. But anyway, it's a public onboard form. I will put this in the description of the video down below. Let me get out of here now. Well, let's see if I can get out of my thing here. Um, hold on. Stop the share, there you go. So anyway guys, I am going to put a lot of notes in the description down below of the YouTube video. I've got a lot of links to my call that girl biz that you can click on. I really appreciate if you like and share and subscribe to my channel here if you like the video. Also, just remember you can hire me. Uh, you can email me, Lisa, call that girl biz. You can call me at 612-865-4475. Hope this all helps for you guys. And also don't forget my two hour tech ticket is 249 till the end of the year. After that, I'll have another probably sale price, maybe two, $2.99 or something. But um, it's good to have me on hand if you need me. I'm fast and on email all the time. Okay, guys, thanks for checking out my video. Bye now.